My first memories of clay, well, I've always liked getting dirty. I like being outside and I've always enjoyed that ever since I was a kid. I would always be out making mud pies and being dirty and I was the kid that my mom had to take my clothes off in the garage and then carry me over to the sink that was in the laundry room and put me in there. Or I had like rings around the bathtub of dirt. So, always loved getting dirty. I was a senior in high school and I needed a PE class and I was on independent study because all my friends had already graduated and my only friend that was still in high school was at a different high school but she was really good at art and she had to take an art class. So my counselor forgot to fill out how many units I could take so I was only supposed to take three for the PE class but I filled in 12 and I took a full load and one of the classes was the ceramics class with her and that ended up being my favorite class. Um, I knew that that was what I wanted to do, I think it was my second semester, so it was probably, I was probably still 19, and Otto Heino, who is a famous potter, was friends with my ceramics teacher, and he was showing his work at our school. And he came in and I was throwing and I had my friend sitting next to me and Otto came by and I just had like a cylinder going. And he was like, you have what it takes. And I was like, I can't even believe that he just said that to me. He has two Rolls Royces and a Bentley. I've been to his house and he got all that money from doing pottery. And he said I had what it takes and I was like, well, if he thinks that I do, it's possible that I do. So I already loved it, but that was just like the push. I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. And then that year, my grandma bought me a wheel. So I was just full in love after that. I think I enjoy the most about it, what I think I enjoy the most about it, is I like the process. I like that I get lost in the making of it. You can't be in your mind about other things because what you're making gets all crazy. So. It's like you have to be centered for the clay to be centered. And I like that it is, it has like its own discipline to it because at every stage you can completely lose your work. You can let it dry out too much and not be able to trim your pieces. You can blow them up in the kiln. You can have them like completely done and you love it, but it's still like a blank canvas because then you have to glaze it. And then you could do a terrible glaze job on a beautiful piece of pottery and completely ruin it. But I think that it's exciting because every time you open the kiln you have something in there that you don't like and you don't want to repeat and then there's something in there that it's like a little treasure and you're like I can't believe I made that. So opening the kilns always a surprise and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's really bad. <laughs> but um, I don't know, I just like it because I'm always learning new things and I just really enjoy the process of the whole thing. So the type of pottery that I make is considered functional pottery and it's called functional pottery because you can use it. And I like to make functional pottery because I like that it's both artwork and it's something that you can use and it has purpose. It's not just something pretty that's gonna sit on your shelf and collect dust. And, um, oh, for example, like this. So it's a bowl, you can use it, you can put things in it, you can eat it, eat out of it, but it has a little bird and the little eggs in the nest. It's cute. So it's pretty. It makes it special. It just feels good to like have something in your hand that somebody else made with their hands. It has a totally different energy to it than something that was made from a machine. And I also like making functional pottery because I can just sit there and make a bunch of them and I just zone out and it's like, I don't know, it's really enjoyable for me. But I'm also going to start taking more time in some of my pieces and really thinking of what I want to express so that I can make sculptural pieces that have more of a story to them. So that's something I've been thinking about a lot lately too, but I like both. I started selling pottery uh, at the farmer's market, uh, downtown farmer's market, and well there's two a week. And so I would go set up my stuff and had a booth there, and I did that for a few years, probably four years. And then I had a baby, and that was just too much work to be dragging a baby and all the things. So I decided to try and sell stuff in stores downtown. So then I was part of Embellish and Restore and the Enjoy Store, which was amazing. And then when that closed, 
I decided to just try and do Etsy. And I've been doing that for two years and it's going so good and I love it. So mostly now you'll find me on Instagram where I post like new things that I'm doing. And then in my stories, I am like always posting day to day life of the crazy animals and the kiddos and the pottery process and all the things. And I post on there when I'm having new sales with new things. And I have a website, honeybeepottery.com. That will also take you to my Etsy if you want to see what I'm working on. And I'm going to have my YouTube channel and Patreon where I'll do lessons on things like processes for certain types of pottery and things like that.